more of like in multiple dimensions and that'd be good. So that's the issue. Like, will it, it will it happen quick enough that we can actually upload our brains, or will it happen so slowly that we'll just merge and it will seem like there won't be a copied self? It will just mm. be you will slowly and very very slowly merge until you literally become all digital. Yeah, I think it's going to be that. That's where I'm placing my bets. Yeah. That we've already started to do it now. That I mean, we uh, again, Facebook so. and all of that. Just the way we interact, our digital persona, so to speak. Yeah. It's going to be our main persona because we're going to be all interacting in this virtual world and until we actually disconnect from it, it's going to be an alien, alien experience for people. Mm. That's going to be cool. E3 2020, so 10 years, uh, what games will be like in 10 years. Um, we're, we should be getting close to almost as real as real life. Well, actually, to do this, I actually did a bit of um, bit of research onto this and by research it was tough, it was difficult. <laughs> I actually went searching and I found an old computer game magazine, The Sims, which just got reviewed nearly exactly 10 years ago. So I read through this again. It's fantastic. Quake 3 had just <laughs> came out, and that's the big game. Actually cool. talking about configuring your sound card to have optimum sound in Quake 3. Ooh. And the thing that, you know what really jumped out at me? Yeah. How similar everything still is. The, the, the games, like 10 years ago, I mean, the graphics have changed yeah. exponentially. The, the like gameplay. The, the, the gameplay is pretty similar. I think the main change that we've seen are like stuff like Guitar Hero and then the MMOs. Yeah. But they, they have been the big changes. Well, and now, like, uh, social games, I guess. Oh, and social games, of course. Kind of... Which, I, I think, they're just beginning. Yeah. But, I mean, I think that's where we're going to see the massive change. I mean, one interesting thing that I saw with Crisis is that Crisis, you know, used to be, oh, the computer's fast but can't run Crisis. You know, it's been the benchmark for <laughs> awesome games. It's a joke uh, now. <laughs> it is. But there hasn't been an improvement on that in about two years, or since Crisis came out, two, two and a half years? So you don't, so you don't think there's going to be any like hardcore graphic intensive. I don't think like talking about realistic worlds and all of that. I'm sure it's going to get better no matter what. But yeah. I still think even ten years from now we're going to be able to tell it. Because another good example, just watched uh, Prince of Persia today, and the CGI in that is, it's not very good. You can still always tell when it's CGI. Yeah. And I mean that's like ten years ago. You think of like the Pixar movies out then was that's that was even after Toy Story and stuff. It's we haven't really. I don't think gotten to that point, like even with dedicated server farms to actually have realistic, and I don't think we're going to see that this way. I think it's going to be more games invading our life. Yeah. Ten years from now. That's why I think E3 is going to be the more, you know, the social games, the Project Natal, the Move, the so Rock Band. Uh, mm. What about you? Well, see, I was trying to think, I couldn't, like, because do you think, like, BCI technology won't, what do you think? I don't know, maybe that'll be a big thing. From every, like, what but, will the hardware be like in ten years? It's hard to... Yeah, no. well, see, that's the, the hardware thing is going to be the big stuff that are maybe like, say, with the Kindle, uh, Kindle uh, Connect and stuff, that how you're remotely using it and stuff. Yeah. Maybe there might be another attachment that registers what you do with your brain and stuff. Cool, saw a cool Star Wars toy that well, does there's, it. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, devices out now that just sort of, uh, measure the EEGs. Yeah. As how fast you're thinking yeah. and stuff. But, so, um, in 10 years, like, wouldn't they be more advanced? Yeah. Would, would we have chips in our brain? See, that we, we also had that 10 years ago. I remember going to the science museum, you know. Canberra Questacon was great. Okay. They had the same machine. It's been around for a while. It's not mainstream. No. So it'll probably be that more. It's more virtual in the sense that I mean we have massive screens and we're interacting with a big yeah. thing, but we're just holding like a prop or something, or we're not using a prop or we're interacting that way. Well, I guess the one thing we can be certain of is it'll be uh, mobile gaming will be massive and yeah. points. Oh yeah. Well, points seems to be like invading society at the moment. Absolutely fantastic talk. We've mentioned it before, but you should yeah. watch it. Go chuck up the link now. It's it'll blow you away. Just absolutely yeah. blow you away. We, we've been thinking games. about all sorts of point type stuff lately. Actually, gonna get points for brushing your teeth, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> it's important. Cool. Well, and the last one. Last one. See, I'm not sure if I've answered that. It's really hard with gaming, like, because I don't. Oh, yeah. Know. Well, so that's why, like, just look, look ten years ago. That I mean, The Sims was the big thing there. Like, the what have been in, the big in ten years' time? It'll be more of a Changed than it was ten. Mm. Like maybe, this was maybe still... times that by like one and a half or something. Yeah, well that's it. You get the exponential growth. Yeah. So graphics will obviously be better, but how immersive will it be? What will the hardware be like? I think it's talking about like will we have virtual hard overlays? Like, I think we will. A hard overlay is going to be because at the moment they just seem. Well, we're already gimmicky. seeing augmented worlds and stuff. Like I mean, you talk about the iPad and all of that. If you had the camera on the side that you can augment yeah. it and stuff. Uh, Red Castle talks about. Um, a in his predictions, far, far out in the future, sort of 150 years, that will reach a level where we can't, uh, we can't make transistors any smaller. Um, we've reached an atomic level, and we can't go any further um, because weird things happen at quantum level. Well, you, you're thinking, you're thinking was that um, eventually, 
this intelligence that we create will just turn every single atom on the earth yeah. into a computer. Yeah, I, I agree with yeah, Kurzweil in that, that I think everything is just going to be... We're going to start searching for matter. And I yeah. think that's about as much as you can say with it. But along those lines, there are actually a few things you can extrapolate, which I think is really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the big problems we're going to face. First one being is that we're going to run out of, like, the sun is pretty much our main source of energy. There's no, like, a little bit fuels. of tide, a little all yeah. of that, fuels, all of that. The sun's going to be the main thing. And so I think that what's going to happen is there's going to be a big challenge when we actually run out of sunlight uh, on the earth, that we've actually got all the maximum amount of sunlight coming from mm -hmm. the earth. So yeah. that's, I think, Fusion. a big thing. Fusion, yeah. Just to actually do cold make fusion. Make your own yeah. sun. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that's a good point, actually. It's, it's just that's chemical reactions. Point. Yeah. Quantum. Well, see, like, the Dyson sphere idea, don't you? Well, see, that's what I think is going to be a big thing after that, that we're going to start then, like, join to the moon to actually get more sun exposure, yeah. and then we're going to start maybe turning a lot of the dead planets, so to speak, into live ones and moving, making them into, like, a big shield and stuff, so we're actually getting all the sun. Yeah. And then even eventually, like, a Dyson ring, or more probably a Dyson... Yeah, Di a Dyson ring rather than a Dyson sphere or something, or Dyson satellite, etc. The Dyson sphere, sorry if I haven't explained it, is, um... It's a, it's a, it's a shell around the sun, pretty yeah. much. It. it just, yeah, all, all the energy just goes directly into it. I mean, talk about fusion, I mean, that'd be the ultimate thing there. So can't, can't you just turn something inside it? Wouldn't that be more efficient? Into the sun. Yeah. It's very hot. Yeah, but... <laughs> future, man. Future. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I see that as a, as a big thing. Yeah, um, the, the, the question about the ultimate uh, computer... Like, all, oh, there, yeah, because we're going to hit the wall. Yeah, there is, there is eventually a final wall with computing. Yeah. To our current understanding. Mm. Like, you never know, they could... We could discover something. Transdimensional. Really yeah. Pretty cool. We can, Quantum computers just totally crazy. More exponential than we thought. But um, when we get to that point, like that is like intense computing power. Yeah. Oh, that's it. It's like unfathomable. Intense. And I mean, once you get to that point, I think the only... Like you want to go and just make the rest of the universe into smart matter, essentially. Everything alive. Yeah. Well, you, essentially every atom on this earth would just be turned into a computer. Like rearranged yeah. into... That's why I like the nanotech thing, because... We'll get to the point where if you have good nanotech, you can just imagine whatever you want and it can form it. One thing I thought about, actually, I've been thinking a lot about this. I don't think we'd actually do it too much with a, like, a large chunk of Earth. I'm talking like a large number of percent. Yeah. But I think it's going to be main things like, say, the moon and the other rocky planets. They're going to be just pure computers because we're okay. not going to really need them. Because, I mean, I, I so don't think we'd, we'd still destroy the... Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, like, maybe after a while, but it's just like for... We don't really need... That all that sentimental value. value. Yeah, that's it. Like you look <laughs> at the size of Jupiter, you look at the size of Saturn. You know, like once we can do that to gas giants, fuck me. But um, yeah, the, I, I think yeah. we'll probably still leave Earth. No, I don't know. It's highly speculative. Yeah, that's very difficult to work out. Yeah, because that's the extreme. So then, what would this this computer do? Like, I think it's just expand. I, I think the best way to look at it is well, just as a more cell. More knowledge. Again. Yeah, it just moves more knowledge. I think. Yeah. I think that's the. I think that's the infinite thing. Like you can never. I don't think there's anything such thing as infinite knowledge. So right. it's always a constant totally quest subjective. for more knowledge. I think, yeah, look at it as a cell again. Is it just awakening again in a whole new universe? That's where time becomes really great because you've got the speed of light as a factor. And so then well, it yeah, that's, that's, the, the processing yeah. power is actually just the same as like a cell moving around. That's one of our ideas. We've, oh, I'm sure a lot of other people have, have had it as well. But um, the reason we haven't come across any in, massively intelligent uh, organ, uh, species before like yeah. extraterrestrial species that have come to us is because perhaps the speed of light is the absolute maximum speed you can travel. Yeah, yeah. And if that's the case, then it's going to take, you know, those beings yeah. or whatever it is at the moment, this intelligent goo or whatever, yeah. it's going to take it billions, billions so of have years. The, the seeding, so what you do is just yeah. seed out all the planets, they become post-singularity and they join with the rest of it. <laughs> that's kind of cool. Which just <laughs> gives a notion to the seeding theory for Earth. Yeah. That's it. We could just be a whole seating. And we're nearly there. We've nearly reached it. And then as soon as we're, we've converted everything into it, we start searching for others. <laughs> we're like, oh, look, the whole rest of the freaking planet, the rest <laughs> of the universe is like, if we can finally join with it, get all the computing power to us. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Very speculative. Very fun to talk about. It is. It's yeah. great. Give us your ideas back. Like, yo, dude, Smalley, thanks for, thanks for the video, dude. Like, that's awesome. That's cool. Good questions. <laughs> if, if we didn't answer anything uh, properly enough, just, you know, send us a message or whatever and we'll try again. Damn straight. <laughs> Well, yeah, or anything you want to add, any other people want to add anything else, mm -hmm. definitely. Sweet. Good. Yeah, cool. Cool. Well, Catch yeah. you guys next week. Yeah, high 45 for this week. Sweet. I'm Nathan Waters. I'm Tristan Grace. Catch you guys. See ya. Woo. Woo. Beep, beep. Good.